the question is are there any requirement of nozzle alignment checking for a system without hanger now here i am anticipating hanger means a spring hanger so the uh, now there are two aspects of it two kinds of equipment one is rotating like pumps and second kind of rotated equipments which are the pressure vessels okay uh, now if i am modeling anything which is having a spring into it uh, while doing the alignment check the spring becomes rigid because nobody keeps the spring active and do the alignment check the spring has to be rigid practically speaking at site people will check whether this flange and this flange there is a easy passage of the bolts through or not if it is a top nozzle then they will be checking at site they have you know a very thin uh, gauge like a you know just a plate which is having a micron uh, or 1 mm thickness or all they will try to insert this gauge through this and check whether there is a free pass and the distance is not more than 3 mm why they say 3 mm because when they put the gasket gasket gets compressed which is 4.5 mm thick this 4.5 mm thick gasket gets compressed up to 3 mm so general practice is they will check the gap of 3 mm and at the same time they will be checking whether this is going in this way or this way not more than 3 mm so this is the another check what they will do now in earlier days when i was like 15 years back or 20 years back when i was a junior engineer uh, we used to check the alignment only for case of compressors or turbines or very you know huge pumps uh, say 14 inch diameter 16 inch diameter those pumps we used to do but the diameter less than say 6 inches wherein it is very much possible to have the uh, you know you can pull the line on top of the pump then we never used to check the alignment for these kind of stuff uh, but nowadays say last 10 years on there are some uh, mss sps which are telling you that you check the pump alignment even in displacement now i'll tell you a classic case which we dealt yesterday this is a pump line and this is a discharge and support is possible only at these locations now there is no support possible at this location where the actual pump is now what will happen when you do a caesar analysis of such a kind of systems uh when you do the anchor free check when you remove this pump this would go in this direction this will tilt okay and whatever attempts you make it's very difficult that you try to pass it in this way now let's take the reality of this support now the reality of this support is if i take a cross section of this support then this is a pipe having a shoe okay and this shoe is resting on a beam so this is continuously supported entire shoe is supported now despite of the fact that you wish that this is going in this direction so if you go and check the rotations in caesar in displacement so you get dx dy dz and rx ry rz suppose this is my x axis oh sorry z axis so you can see a rotation of rz given in caesar and this could be very small magnitude of say yesterday we have seen 0.03 okay uh, of degree now caesar is a beam element software so caesar does not think this piping as a complete pipe a complete shoe caesar can't think in that way caesar thinks as a simple line having no dimensions and caesar is giving you this much amount of rotation in degrees in reality if you see the shoe at least half the portion of the shoe is totally resting even if this wants to rotate 
it can't rotate so in reality this rotation is not possible so practically it's not possible now in such a cases when you have such a kind of trouble at least in alignment check when you do w and c weight no content plus h so spring is involved in this case for this support you can make rz as zero that is rotations are not allowed and once you stop having the rotations at these two points you can see the entire pipe becomes straight so the fictitious answer given by the software now even though i take a name of caesar it's applicable for all the software like rower k pipe auto pipe everything and the software is not going anywhere in wrong direction they already have a disclaimer that this is a beam element software and we as a user should know it in such a cases if you stop this rz moment automatically you will find the movement is hardly less than 2 mm or so so this is one of the solution you can do when there is this kind of alignment check now if you are having a pressure vessel and there is a hanger on top okay generally we don't check alignment for pressure vessel because pressure vessels are not strain sensitive equipments wherein the pumps and all they are strain sensitive so strain matters here that's why we don't want any additional load because of the connected piping on it but for pressure vessel they are pretty strong they are mainly driven by the stresses into it so we don't check the alignment in this cases so answer to your question is if it is rotating equipment yes alignment check is needed now there are latest mss sp they are restricting you up to 1.5 mm uh, in fact to be honest recently i came to know that there is 1.5 mm requirement uh, i'll let you know the mss sp number as well uh, probably a day after tomorrow uh, and we check this for pressure vessels we need not now let me go to the if system has more than one pumps uh, should we do this free uh, alignment check uh, for both the pumps together then my answer is no you do one by one perfectly all right nobody is going to check at site uh, both pumps or three pumps alignment together it's all one pump at a time so you can take the advantage even uh, we also can take if there is a top discharge nozzle the way we have discussed some companies also do take advantage that this is a top discharge so even for alignment check when i am modeling in caesar the pump is always there to support me so they do take plus y support active and they check alignment only for x and z because practically pump is there at site so i have pump present even though it's not bolted it is there so it's not going to allow pipe to go down so this is another advantage uh, especially epc companies do take those who know that their own people are there at site and they are going to construct but pure consultant may not allow you this so yes stress analysis is preferential domain uh, same question can have different answers is there an, any relationship between nozzle allowable forces and moment and allowable forces and moments for flange leakage analysis uh, then my answer to this question is no there is no relation uh, absolutely uh, because flange leakage analysis is based on there are three aspect you know one is uh, uh, what i can say uh, a semi sectioned method second is uh, the equivalent pressure method so those methods what they are trying to do they are trying to check the permissible forces and moments on face of flanges to what extent they are allowed and in equivalent method we have discussed this in very detail in our course but in this method uh, we mainly use the the design pressure plus a equivalent pressure which is the outcome of force and moment and it has to be less than rated one that is the simplest way of analysis wherein the allowable forces and moments they are derived
from the fact that these forces and moments are ultimately going to create bending stresses uh, and these stresses are uh, should be low, uh, lower than the a semi section 8 division 2 combination of stresses here i can tell you one thing which i do tell time and again whenever i am talking about any pressure and vessel and you get one set of forces and moments like uh, fx fy fz and mx my mz you have a set suppose vander tells you 100 200 and 300 and correspondingly moments also suppose same this set is not the only set so this is not the only set which pressure vessel can take this is one of the combinations or permutations and combinations of the forces and moments that you can take now just go back to the concept of stress analysis we have learned this first is the displacement field which takes into picture second is the strain field which is the outcome of stress and third is the stress field now out of these displacement is real strain is real stress concept is not a real concept this is a concept which is developed to understand these two in a better way you can't measure physical stress you can measure displacement you can measure the strain but you can't measure the stress fine so whatever extreme level of analysis you perform for example what's going to happen you are going to end up with FEA where you will raise your hands either you will go back to vendor or a FEA expert now what FEA person does he does the modeling either using a beam element or a 2d shell element or a 3d solid element right so he does it into this in Caesar even you see this real thing is a spring a rigid mass a flange a rigid sorry again a spring here and you will be having a spring of very high stiffness which is nothing but your rigid element now what Caesar is doing Caesar is going to give you only the answer assuming it as a center line and the stress value at this points what ANSYS is going to do ANSYS is going to generate the real stresses using 2D or 3D and it could be a von Mises stress and this is less than based on your combination it could be less than SH it could, it could be less than 1.5 times of SH it could be less than 3 times of SH so there are different provisions given so ultimately you are going to check this stresses into it and these stresses are outcome of strains and if you fail in stresses right then i can go further up into a non-linear region and he will perform a non-linear analysis and what he will check the strain based analysis and he will check the actual strain is less than whether it is allowable strain or not and he will give his verdict whether these loads are allowable or not so the strain is nothing but the displacement so answer to your question uh, no there is no relevance in both of them uh, both are uh, different uh, school of thoughts and by which have been derived and different industrial practices are there now uh, we generally at piping terminal get a point uh, of two vendors analyzing the same system considering an anchor point can you please elaborate little bit significance of the same for more clarity as we do not have anchor at terminal point so the question is i am sharing my screen once again uh, see here the question is if there is uh, this kind of thing comes when you have a skid piping suppose I have a skid okay and suppose there is an anchor here then I understand that yes I can go up to this anchor point and I can also take this anchor and uh, I can go ahead now here the question is I am coming from one end 
this is my termination and second person is going up but there is no anchor physical anchor here okay uh then what to do a uh, very good question and perhaps this is a question wherein uh, we can absolutely present a paper uh, by doing a detailed investigation on this first of all a pipe okay does not discriminate that whether i am lying in a proton synergy scope or i am lying in the van der scope okay pipe is pipe once you are connecting it's going to work as a homogeneous system or means or i would say not homogeneous a continuous system so when you are tying this up it's a continuous system so effect from this side also can come here effect from this side also can come here fine in such a cases what i can recommend you is you perform the analysis by asking the other side to provide you displacements and rotations okay so you are considering let's assume that you have the farthest anchor which you don't know because you know only up to this point you don't know what is happening here but you know the displacements and rotations so take them apply in caesar and make your system safe and don't model this you model only your part and whatever forces and sorry displacements and rotations you get give it to this fellow vendor and tell him that you perform this so you are actually doing a conservative analysis because in real case what can happen is that your pipe is moving in this direction his pipe is moving in this direction they both as a displacement they both can cancel each other here in you are taking a worst case that they are not cancelling you are considering this and performing your analysis and he is considering this and performing his analysis and if the both analysis are okay you can go ahead with uh, but uh, i am pretty much sure uh, when you model the entire system together the answer could be little different or else you have to insist him to take the anchor somewhere or you have to provide the anchor in your area or axial stop not anchor even axial stop is okay and ask him to come to your point these are the three options you can go ahead with okay very wonderful question why uh, we have dlf as two dynamic load factor as two a uh, very nice thing see look at here i think the screen is visible to you uh now i'm going to make it on my screen once again see this this dynamic load factor is what we are trying to simulate a dynamic movement into a static okay means something which is happening very sudden let's think what is its effect as a continuous thing in caesar everything for suppose this is a pipe acted upon by any force okay this is or any software using beam element this is taken as a spring a mass and a force so you have three factors spring mass and force so everything revolves around this equation f equals k into delta or f equals k into x so entire static analysis including in ansys everything revolves in this nothing more than that fine now what i am supposed to do is that if i imagine this spring like this instead of horizontal i am imagining as a vertical one so i am just imagining this as a vertical pipe acted upon by a force now in dynamic analysis what's going to happen this force is going to come sudden if i want to draw a time force versus time it will be like this a sudden force comes and it goes down if it is very fast i can show it as only single line going up so within fraction of second it is going to come down now this i want to evaluate as a static one so what i imagine that let's pull this at this point by a distance x 
okay now it is having a potential energy of m into g into x let's forget the gravity right now <coughs> sorry so i am saying potential energy is m into x all right now when i am going to release it okay now i i i just pulled it here and now i am going to release it now when i release this this is going to get converted into kinetic energy and this kinetic energy the way you have mv square half of mv square it is half of kx square in case of spring and the thing says potential energy spring means physics says kinetic energy is zero so potential energy gets converted into a kinetic energy okay but total summation is zero so what i am supposed to do is that i am supposed to equate the potential energy into this so i have to take my 2 over here which now i can bring you back to my now i'm just making it little bigger now you can see here half wx equals half of kx square so 2 times of w is kx okay so you can consider the kx f equals k into x the dynamic force f equals kx is equivalent to 2 times of the weight involved and that is the reason generally we take dlf as 2 now let me tell you one thing in my experience when we do real dynamic analysis okay we have the response spectrum analysis or some earthquake i have or even psvs i have done some in dynamics i have seen that the dynamic load factor also exceeds 2 sometimes okay so even though you have this uh, because here the analogy is potential energy is getting converted into a kinetic energy that's it as a spring mass system but when you have a response spectrum so if you consider the response of the system against now if you consider the dlf the definition of dls as response to the actual load or actual applied one this can go a response can be more than two times as well so in such a cases your dynamic load factor can be 3 as well or 2.8 as well or 4 as well you can't say that so when you are doing it if you are doing with a i would say psv is an all dynamic load factor of 2 is perfectly all right but if you have some system wherein earthquake is very stringent or very important or any random shock is going to come like a water hammer or surge analysis then you might this is a caution to you if you are doing any system having a surge and the process engineer doesn't give you the forces properly and he gives you only a pressure surge pressure the mistake what you do to this surge pressure you multiply by a to get a force and you multiply this by 2 as a dlf and you do the analysis to me this is a blunder but we do it okay in industry we are doing it uh <clears throat> but this is my answer which i can give you in webinar to a limited extent why the dlf is 2 i hope my answer is satisfying your requirements why don't we have a separate equation of sustain sf a wonderful question see stress intensification factor the root of this lies in markel's experiment now we have a separate two hours total video on this concept what is the markel in our training sessions and we are discussing a lot into it now what this fellow did markel uh, this markel did experiment like this so i am drawing it i have a good picture of it but it will take time so i am just scribbling here so it is fixed here there is a end cap here there is a instrument which is giving you the displacement and there is a girth weld here now this pipe is belonging to 4 inches okay now this pipe is belonging to 4 inches and what he did he pressurized this 
and after having pressure what he said that he counted the number of cycles after which he found a crack so he derived the equation which told you that if you have a well joint present a normal pipe suppose i am giving a you know thumb rule kind of explanation this is not the real explanation given by markel but just to make you understand he is trying to tell you that if you have a plain pipe without any this kind of joint it would go suppose 10000 cycles normally but since you have a welding present this would go only 5000 cycles and he is giving a factor like set 2 so what he says if your actual stress is uh, suppose 15000 psi and your permissible stress is suppose i'll take more i'll take actual stress as 25000 and your permissible stress is 30000 strain driven secondary stress so 25000 less than 12 and this is valid for suppose 20 years lifetime but this portion won't last for 20 years this will last for 10 years means a normal pipe which can go up to say 20000 cycles this pipe can go only up to 10000 cycles so this is going to fail first but at side you cannot say oh this is a weld it can't live for 20 years it can live only for 10 years so change this after 10 years nobody is going to do it so what he said you do in reverse way whatever stress you are getting at this point the real stress 25000 you multiply this by 2 and assume it as 50000 now this 50000 is exceeding 30000 so you take some precautionary action by reinforcing it or changing layout or supporting and bring this 50000 stress okay down to 25000 which is less than 30k so in reality you are bringing the actual stress of 25000 to 12500 so you are not allowing this pipe in reality to go 12500 which is equivalent to 25000 by having this factor of 2 and this i am calling as sif stress intensification factor right now this is all related to the cyclic loading so thermal loads are cyclic or secondary one displacement driven are cyclic secondary one but now i am coming back to your question why there is no sif for sustain sustain our definition is w plus p sustain this is a load which is a primary load which is going to remain with the system for ever it's not going to change it is non cyclic load so since it is non cyclic load sif concept is actually not applicable at all for sustain loading fine but now look at this now we are calling it it is not going to get changed i can understand weight is not going to get changed but do you have a guarantee pressure is non fluctuating there is always a chance that pressure may have some fluctuation so despite of the fact you are calling it as a primary non fluctuating non cyclic in reality this is a cyclic one right is it not contradictory statement it is but the code is written in this way that's why i hope these two questions uh will make your uh, time worth coming here now look at here if you see that black color at the bottom sif is a stress amplitude to the failure of girth weld in n cycles divided by stress amplitude to the failure of a component without having girth weld which is not written there so it's a ratio of two cycles which i told you when last you read ssi stress indices which is nothing but collapse of a straight pipe divided by collapse of a pipe so that's why this concept is not present it is it was not there 
so if you see now the black wordings which i am now going to read the following interpretation apply to b31.3 code prior to 2010 edition so they are only applicable if you need to analyze older jobs now look at here if you want to do a older job you have a separate definition new job separate how come a pipe would come to know that i am older than 2010 and i am now after 2010 so i am going to behave in different way right is it funny is it not 31.3 interpretation 1-34 february 23rd 1981 okay almost 40 years back file 1470 states that for sustain and occasional loads you can use sif of 0.75 times of i but not less than 1 means at least you should consider whatever stress present in a straight pipe at least that should be there to comply with this interpretation the caesar is giving you 0.75 as a option there if you go to the caesar software 31.36-03 december 14 1987 permits you to ignore the stress intensification for sustained and occasional so there are two different interpretations to comply with this interpretation caesar software has given you 0 0.001 so when you say 0 0.001 it is as good as negligible so it ignores the sf ignores absolutely ignores but if you want to use 1 or 0 0.75 times of i higher of that it is the 0 0.75 option they have given right now come to the latest code now this is covered in our uh, this is a slide from my normal course if you see this the equation on right hand side it is square root of s a plus s b the whole square plus two times of s t square where s b component s b is a bending stress which you can see my cursor is moving it is in plane bending moment square plus out plane bending moment square divided by z but the bending moment is multiplied by capital i i and capital i i is sustained in plane moment index so it is not stress intensification factor in new code it is in plane moment index so they have now taken out that word very cleverly out out that it is stress intensification factor now it says that in absence of more applicable data so you have been given a full freedom that if you want to ignore you ignore so if you say ignoring is a more applicable for me you can ignore but you have to take minimum one which is okay fair enough good justice or else it could be 0 0.75 times of ii so you have been given three options minimum consider one or you can have 0 0.75 times of ii and third is you can ignore if you want to say that it is more applicable so now today there is a specific value for stress intensification factor or rather than i would say stress moment indices not today it's more than nine years now in the code that's why now we can't claim in that way okay it's there for everywhere so code has made a provision for their future uh, amendments and somebody is working on that okay how to combine solar radiation temperature in load case 31.3 it's very simple one minute answer for that see if your ambient temperature is 21 degrees celsius okay and if your solar is suppose 65 degrees celsius your operating is suppose 45 then simply you make p1 as say 65 t2 as 45 right and you have already installation temperature if you have any negative temperature of minus 5 degree so you can have t3 so while making you make these three load cases and when you have this corresponding expansion cases you can have and you should have one more case which is having t1 minus t3 means w plus p1 plus t1 minus w plus p1 plus t3 so if it is l1 if this is l3 so it is l1 minus l3 which should take it and this takes care of your solar radiation temperature if your design temperature is already higher than solar suppose you have 100 degrees celsius 
then don't use solar not required because solar is already taken care of this is the way you can do it how to calculate axial stiffness of expansion bellow now here my answer is very simple you can't calculate it it's very tough because you are not designing the bellow bellow designer is somebody different person okay this is cannot be done very sim simplistic way you have to refer to a catalog so refer a catalog like this which gives you axial spring rate lateral spring rate and angular very much easily available on internet so you can just go through and take it you can't calculate it manually not possible because uh, bellow is altogether different stuff you have convolutions based on the thickness based on this radius it depends on when to use expansion bellow with or without tie rod very simple my answer never use a expansion joint without tie rod at least you should have a limit rod there are two kinds of expansion joint this is without tie rod this is with tie rod now when you say tie rod i understand the nut is fixed from either side so there is a 0 mm gap for a bellow we have very extensive module for bellow which has been admired by many of even seniors having 10 12 15 years experienced because very few engineers get a chance to deal with bellow i am fortunate i have myself installed more than uh, 150 bellows at site in under my observation and we have even predicted the failure this bellow is not done properly it will fail and it really failed uh now this is a tied bellow and this is untied bellow now untied bellow has a biggest disadvantage with every word knows is a thrust so i would say when you want to take the axial compression you should use the untied bellow when you want to take the lateral one so this bellow can go in lateral direction so this can go in this way use this but take one example of a gre line a water line going to a pump this is a pump so it is having only a static head means the line is coming from a tank i'll just do a tank here this is a tank filled with water hardly having suppose 5 meter of height so if it is a 5 meter of height here hardly half a bar pressure here not much in such a situation i can go with a rubber bellow or even a metallic if you have more money now this bellow is here to take the axial compression absolutely fine now in such a cases you know that the bellow is going to go in axial compression so you can use a untied bellow but this bellow is going to exert a force now while having a nozzle evaluation of pump you need not consider this thrust force the thrust force will go on to the base of the pump okay if you have a layout instead of like this okay i would say this is a more common layout we we have come across this layout a lot a tank directly to the pump you will find it in gre piping system it is very common now here for nozzle evaluation even if you use this untied bellow don't use the thrust force for nozzle evaluation this would go here and here as well since it's a open water this nozzle will not experience the thrust this nozzle will be experiencing a force because of thermal expansion plus k times of delta force because of bellow pump as well will experience a thermal force and k times of delta k times of delta is nothing but stiffness of bellow multiplied by bellow displacement how bellow is getting compressed fine so you can use untied bellow now my suggestion is even though you are using this as a precautionary measure you go with a limit rod now why what is the difference in limit rod you have only the outer nut tight don't allow bellow to expand because of pressure and put a gap in inner ones 
and this should take your compression so you are confident that the bellow will go only in compression it cannot go in expansion direction so your both the purpose are saved your piping system is very much uh, safe just day before yesterday i had been to one of the biggest uh, companies site actually i went to site and uh, i had actually seen a lover bellow and i asked them in person what it is it was a pump discharge there was a rubber bellow without a tie rod it's a rubber huh? and the piping was like this i don't know whether one of my office fellow is in this webinar or not sushant was there with me at site i showed him this and this is a pump and there was only a rest support here and this bellow was without a tie rod without anything and working very fine the reason is very simple you have enough dead weight present on the bellow which is against a force of p into a p is very small less than a one bar you have a limited area so the dead weight itself is so much of this that the bellow is not able to push it but this simulation caesar can't show you if you apply the what i would say uh, the pressure thrust on or effective id on caesar will directly show you a p into a as a force on pump and this body but in practically you can find this is all working fine and that's why i insist if you have a rubber bellow or any bellow don't consider the thrust loads on to the pump consider them on to the anchor of the pump so it's a ring type header a modeling and validation now this is one of the model which we did this is a single ring you can see two blue colors one is dark and one is light and both are the same ring means the ring which is going down the same ring is coming from inside up and this kind of analysis we have done you if uh, gautam you are lucky if you get such a kind of analysis now how to model this uh, yeah means i can just give you a hint see uh what do you mean by circle circle is nothing but you can imagine as numerous right so can i say that each circle is a pipe you probably might have played uh, with some kind of games when you were a kid wherein you make a ring out of it you have such a kind of small small stuff you join them and you make a ring out of it so what we are doing is we are joining this so this is a pipe having a certain radius okay so now your mass has to be just little bit good, good enough and the geometry this is s this is theta so s equals r into theta where theta is in radians fine so you know what radius you want to have the circle of you know how many parts you want to break into okay uh, so that decides your degrees for example you decide to have a circle of uh, say 10 degree then you have 36 equal parts each having 10 degree convert this into radians so pi radians is 180 degrees okay and then just give a small one give a bend command there and just go next 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 or else if you can't do that then have a another one you give a rotate command model it give a rotate command to the next element model a straight element give a rotate command and keep on doing it and while doing so do some mathematics so that if you are going down or up how much amount of slope is there and then do a wonderful uh, layout or, or model in caesar and show me so this is the hint which i can give you uh, rest uh, struggle a bit uh, means it takes little time to do it okay now there is a question called uh, sif calculation for non standard parts now here i can't answer this question here but what i can tell you is uh there is a if my screen is visible there is a webinar already present on youtube 
which we only have conducted okay now this webinar link uh, komal can uh, send you uh, wherein you know we have talked about uh, various aspects of fea finite element analysis i hope the ad doesn't play here how ice loading is given in caesar 2 and what parameters to take care of handling the negative temperature both are different questions uh, for ice loading it's very simple uh, it's a udl uniformly distributed load so when you are taking the ice load standard excel sheets are available but see the the snow and ice are two different things okay snow and ice both are different things snow is applicable mainly on top section of the piping because when it falls mainly this kind of snow will go down but you will be having say half or little bit extra covered by a snow so only this much area is exposed so if you know the snow thickness if you know the snow density then you can calculate its weight or load per unit length okay and then in caesar you are given where you put your earthquake this ux uy uz there's a provision for uniform loads don't put that icon of uniform load in g's this we don't want this is for earthquake but for uniform load you can calculate the weight of the snow based on density and thickness as per running meter and you can give in ui suppose say you have uh, 5 kg per running meter or 15 newton per running meter you can give in ui so snow is only half ice formation is something different ice formation is because of the negative temperature say you are uh, de dealing with a plant of liquid oxygen or liquid nitrogen and you have minus 196 temperature then the ice could form and this ice would form all around the pipe and this is based on the moisture present in the air like you can see when you are working your air conditioning lines also do have this kind of and this is all around so you you have to check what is the maximum ice formation you have to talk with process people or the site operating personnel they can tell you what could be the maximum ice and this ice can be taken as a insulation this is possible because this is all around or cladding whatever you want and take the density of it and it can be applied for the entire system so this is the way you can take the ice into the system and uh, what care to be taken for handling negative temperature simple care uh, negative temperature systems the first care logically speaking uh, if it is minus 46 and below then you have to be very careful for material selection okay because you can't go even with ltcs perhaps if you're touching minus 20 minus 46 then you may have to take the joule value for the impact testing and there are some provisions in the code which you need to qualify to take care of it because there is a chance of brittle failure and you may have to go with the alloy steam second thing is when you have negative temperature it's a contraction which takes place so your plus y supports can cause you trouble because you have such a kind of layout then this line will contract it will try to go down and this is going to give you hindrance okay and this can cause a stress failure at these points so this is a reverse flexibility you have to give you can't give the support near to the bends you have to shift it as far as possible with best of my exposure to these lines if the pressure is low or else you have such a kind of stuff there is quite a chance that we use hoses so this is not a bellow 
this is a hose metallic hose and this hose have then you can give a support here definitely a typical or permissible amount of bending radius okay so how much it can bend again the same analogy of s into r r r equals r into theta s equals r into theta this you can check and you have to contact the hose winder these are the metallic hoses and he would let you know what is the radius of the bend which is allowed based on the radius of the bend you can check what amount of y value or displacement is allowed and then you can very well effectively use hoses to qualify the systems if you are getting genuine problems of this okay so these are the two three guidelines which i can tell you very fast psv support arrangement yes very fast i can answer this uh see psv there are some myths or uh, wrong considerations uh, which are being followed in the industry but i don't know how to stop it one of the thing is say this is my header flare header now one of the misconcept is people say that this support should always sit i don't know from where it has come it is nowhere written that this support should sit now if i draw isometric of this and suppose this is a flare line uh having this kind of relief wall system and this is going down in 45 degree in some other header this is a pressure line this is a flare line this is may not be flare line this is a flare line sorry now in such a case if you have supported this header very well then how come it is possible that this would sit it's not possible that this would sit okay so for me it's not compulsory that this would sit uh some cases some engineer might have uh, seen this as a lift at site and they might have got panic oh wow this support is lifting off there is something problem but they do, don't know what is there below their platform there is a support present so they might have raised this but nothing to panic second misconception is there must be a support at the discharge i also follow to give this because my client insist me and when i am a vendor of a client i have to listen to them i can't argue much okay now since there is a force present there has to be a support here okay for me this is very tricky suppose this line has a negative temperature say minus 5 degree okay or else even there is a difference of temperatures lying here this support gives a tremendous amount of bending moment in this case and your flange leakage fails then they come out with a solution give a gap here so that the negative moment is allowed fine fair enough i don't know how much gap is maintained at site whether they go and check but on paper we are clear then why to bother about site and with this logic we give it since it is there on iso it must be there at site okay uh, so this is one kind of supporting very common that you give a axial stop uh furthermore you have to further investigate if it is a closed loop psv it means that you have a inlet pressurized and discharge is going in some header please be careful about this force if you open api you will find that they do not talk about this force much the magnitude is very low since you have a back pressure okay let's understand that there is no back pressure it's a worst case so you go back to the vendor vendor gives you tremendous amount of force so you have to put a support here this is one kind of supporting second kind of supporting is this give a trunnion give a stop here okay 
and this rest and stop takes care of it because you also get when it goes to the atmosphere this force having a reaction this has to be resolved okay so this axial stop takes care of the negative component as well as the horizontal so this is another kind of supporting third kind of supporting i have seen is this having a cross bracing okay so you cross brace this and by this you actually transfer the forces from here onto this inlet leg okay and there is a fair bit of chances that you can support this rest and axial this is possible this is third way of doing it okay uh, fourth way of doing is this if you cannot give a support here you can give a support here when it goes down and can you can give a axial stop if your force is present and caesar is showing you that this axial stop is capable of taking the force there is no stress failure there is no mandatory requirement that you have to give it here for me uh, this is not mandatory many companies must they say that you have to give if you don't give that you don't know stress okay that's fine uh, but my personal opinion uh, the location as long as you are getting the stresses well within the limit you can change this location here or cross bracing or this part okay so as long as i am getting the questions which are fast fine so i hope you have enjoyed this session and uh, please uh, do not hesitate uh, to contact komal if you are willing to join our stress analysis course which takes care of all the basic fundamentals right from stress as a scalar or vector or tensor up till the end of turbines compressors column piping expansion joint sf uh, wherein we <clears throat> add to your uh, information or knowledge and we feel uh, proud because this is our company value that we and uh, knowledge sharing what we believe in and we want to become a good training company as well okay so thanks for joining uh,